I am the judge. I am an undeniable force who sits at the presence of my enemies. But whatever God you believe in, have mercy on your soul. YouTube, I have a few names that I know you guys might know. Thurgood Marshall, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, some of these men and women were some of the greatest judges of all time, executing impartial verdicts, but I ain't never seen any of them put on some tights and pile drive a defendant unlike this man. Standing at a whopping six foot eight, 285 pounds, he's stepping inside an MLW war chamber and he's here today. EJ Anuka, how are you, man? I'm good, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. So I want to go ahead and get into it. This Saturday, November 6th at the 2300 Arena, Pennsylvania, you're going to be inside an MLW War Chamber. It's going to be yourself, Richard Holiday, Alex Hammerstone, you're taking on a Contra unit. So you just joined MLW not too long ago, and you're already in the main event of a big pay-per-view. What, what's been your experience like being part of MLW? Uh, being a part of MLW is fantastic. Uh, the people are great. Um, the organization, the promotion, top to bottom is good. Um, just learning a lot and getting to do a lot. That's great. So like, how's it like tagging along with like two of the biggest names in the industry right now or in MLW and also two wild cards possibly taking on like Jacob Fatu and the rest of the country? Unit. How's it like teaming with those guys? Oh, those guys are great. Uh, Richard Holiday, Hammer, they're all awesome dudes. Um, and being able to go against Contra, one of the biggest heel factions in the game right now, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be incredible, you know, but they've been running wild for a little bit. So, you know, judgment day is upon us. <laughs> Love to hear that. So for a lot of fans that are like now seeing you in the ring, what can they expect out of EJ going into the entire chamber, seeing the judge in the chamber, seeing him going against, you know, one of the arguably biggest names in Chicken Pot 2? They're going to see one of the most innovative, explosive big men in the game right now. Uh, the judge has a lot to come with it. Uh, I'm as advertised, you know, these, uh, these guns, this ain't for decoration. These are real life. I call this the hammer and the Ruger. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's, it's, it's advertising. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of intensity, and um, it's going to be a credible match. One thing I'm really loving is that that whole like judge character, the nickname. Yeah. Where did you like get this character from? Like where did the nickname the judge originally uh, like originate? So uh, essentially the judge is just, you know, um, a magnification of just who I am, you know, um, I'm huge in my faith, uh, family and friends. And so the judge just ever, always wants to do right by everyone. And so it's just purely magnified. That was the kind of the nickname that I got over at the performance center. Whenever I walked in uh, the room, the boys would say, the judge is in the building. And so we kind of rolled with it. That's great. So um, you talked about being an MLW. What was like the, the story leading into joining the company? Because I know you released in May, then you joined MLW in July. That's a pretty quick transition right there. Why'd you choose MLW uh, opposed to maybe the other offers on the table? Um, MLW just seemed like the path that, um, not seen, but was the path that was just best for me. Um, all the other organizations are fantastic, but at this time, I just felt it was the best fit for me. They're most transparent. I really just treated it like back when I was in college and I was choosing, you know, the college that I wanted to go to. Everyone had their pluses. Everyone had, you know, um, things that they can offer and what you could bring to the table. But MLW was like the perfect piece of the puzzle. How's your relationship with Court Bauer being that he's like the head of the company? Court's dope. He's a, he's a real good guy. Um, I bounce a lot of ideas off of him and we chop it up. Um, He's a real good guy. And that's one of the major reasons why I decided to come there because he's approachable. And uh, that's always good when you can go and talk to your boss. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it definitely is. <laughs> uh, one thing I've always really loved about MLW is the fact that they really make like legitimate stars while also having these names that were, you know, really big in other places as well. Right, right, From right. your guys like Jacob Fatu or Alex Hammerstone to guys that might have even left MLW like uh, Brian Pillman Jr. or MJF. Why do you think more wrestling fans should be watching Major League Wrestling if they're not already? Major League Wrestling is a blend of all authentic, unique styles. You said it yourself. They've got uh, stars from today's age and then the new stars coming up, like myself. Um, it's a good taste. You know, when you get a soup, you never know what's going to be in it. All soup is the same soup, but you don't know how they make it. And pretty much MLW puts all the best ingredients in and serves it to the people. They give the people what they want. Of course, of course, they definitely do. Uh, I want to get into like your story of joining professional wrestling because I know you were a big rock fan growing up, and then you also did football and, and uh, uh, bodybuilding. Uh, what's your story of getting into the business? Because I know you had a different couple of routes before eventually making the professional wrestling. Yeah, so um, 
I played professional football for about five years and then I got into bodybuilding. Um, I turned pro rather quickly and um, it was kind of a thing where I love bodybuilding, but I'm an athlete. I want to be actively doing something like it's one thing to look like one and there's one thing to be one. And so um, ironically, you know, I started tagging um, uh, the WWE in some of my posts. I started tagging some of the coaches and uh, Scott Garland reached out to me. And um, at first I thought it was a joke. Like I was like, ah, oh, man, this is, you know what I mean? And so he hooked me up with at the time, uh, the talent acquisition dude, um, he's no longer with the company, but you know, he reached out to me and then the ball just really started going. But ironically, before all this happened, um, like I said, I'm huge in my faith and I was at church one day and, you know, um, one of my wife's uh, best friends came up to me and she said, you know, um, my husband and I my, at the time, my boyfriend and I, you know, we watch wrestling all the time and we think that you'd be an awesome wrestler. You have so much charisma and you just got that look. You just got that look. And I mean, I hadn't watched really, really dove into wrestling probably since like college, because, you know, when you get into college sports that just warps your whole mind and and school and getting that degree and just just a pivotal time in your life so I kind of fell off the uh that wagon and when she came up to me it kind of reignited that spark so I started watching it again um and she used to always talk about total d but so I, I watched that with my wife and I was like oh no this is this is pretty dope and so when that ball started rolling because uh Scott Garland it uh the rest was history yeah, so you were talking a lot about your bodybuilding as well in there. Well, what's your favorite workout to do in the gym? Because I'm sure you you work out a lot. You're a big dude. <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have a favorite workout, but I do have a favorite uh, body part to work. I like doing legs. I like doing explosive uh, things, functional movements, things that apply in that ring. So uh, the way I work out is the way I play. I learned that from uh, one of my mentors, Deion Sanders. He said, "You work out the way you want to play. If you want to go slow, you move slow." So I work out extremely fast and explosive and my time intervals, you know, I keep it to a minimum because you don't get any rest in that ring, so. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I mean, you're probably one of the first people I hear to say like they like training legs first. Usually that's what people try to, you know, kind of avoid from time to yeah. time. <laughs> so legs used to, ironically, legs used to be my weakness and used to be one of the body parts I hated training and I made what I hated my passion, you know? It's good. So. Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> moving on to like you being in the WWE, um, like who'd you really learn from in the company? Because I know you mentioned Scott Garland, but like who as well was like also some of your coaches? Um, I had Norman. Uh, Norman is awesome. Carino. Um, Bloom was there, you know, obviously. Uh, it was just a plethora of guys and some of the boys too, man. Like um, learning from Ricochet, you know, there's a lot of guys up there that uh, would help you out kind of give you the keys to success because essentially when you first come in it's almost like um you don't know what to expect because there's so many layers in this world and it's always good to have the vets and um the coaches to kind of you know guide you through that path i know they teach a lot of stuff in wwe obviously the inner component how to be a superstar but what's something that you learned while being a performance center to help you with like life outside of just being a professional wrestler to be honest with you i've been a professional since day one i've been a, a, a pro athlete since i graduated college so this is this world um is something that um i'm used to as yeah. far as the wrestling world uh i think i i realized that it's important to make sure you stay true to yourself because a lot of times um, people kind of get lost in the sauce, you know what I mean? And they kind of lose direction and they just start worrying about things that they can't control and start, you know, getting all worry worried. And I'm just, I'm the type of guy that I can control. I worry, I don't worry. I'm concerned about what I can control, you know? And so that's one of the biggest things that I took away from me. I, yeah, of I course, like control your own destiny. That's that's important, yeah. especially getting into that kind of business. Um, right. I know that a lot of like legends also used to come to Performance Center, just watching your old interviews, um, and talking to the guys and help train them. Was there a certain legend that like took you under his wing or maybe tried to give you some pointers since you are like a bigger dude? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of, so uh, Mark Henry, he used to come around a lot and we learned a lot, uh, especially the big guys. Taker came around a few times. Taker was, I mean, just a plethora of knowledge. Like when Taker came, I was there, you know, I like, I my. <laughs> A lot of my uh, my um, things that I do now was little, you know, nuggets that Taker gives you because 
you can't work like a big man unless you are a big man. There's very seldom athletic big man in this business that's my size. So when Taker came, I'm in there, pen and pad, listening, everything he's saying, you know what I'm saying? Um, Cena came a lot. Cena's uh, phenomenal with psychology, um, ring positioning, and just understanding the business, not just the business, but what how it's ran in the whole, the whole picture. I sat down with Cena for like an hour, just picking his brain. Um, and Edge, Edge saw my very first match. And so it was a private um, PC Live and he came in, it was like a surprise and I was the main event and he saw it. and afterwards, you know, we just talked and he was just giving me pointers. And since then, anytime I need something or have a nice question about psychology, you know, I'll hit him up, I'll text him. And he's he's amazing. If he's not busy, he always shoots back, just a good, good person. That's amazing. So like going in, like you say, your first match, what was the nerves of going in for the first time? Maybe not being from like an actual crowd, but like from like the performance center. Uh, what was like your nerves going into that first ever professional wrestling match for you? Um, I was I was nervous, but I wasn't like uh, body debilitating nervous. Like I, it was the type of nervous that you need when you care about something. You know, the butterflies in your stomach that shows that Hey, I'm alive and this feels good. You know, that type of nervous. And so um, it was it was a good match. Um, I got some good feedback from it. But, you know, it was just a stepping point for me to grow and keep getting better. Definitely. So what was like the crowd reaction when you first had like your first like in front of like crowd uh, show at maybe an NXT live event? Oh, it was crazy. So uh, Carino threw me an alley-oop. So I used to play in Jacksonville and my first uh, live match was in Jacksonville. And Jacksonville was like one of our bigger shows like three four hundred people easily at a jacksonville show and so i was worried you know they weren't gonna know me because i'm new in this industry but everybody's like man you're good you, you went to jacksonville so when i came out that they were like cheering ej ej i said oh okay this is dope <laughs> this is kind of nice and so yeah it was a lot of fun a lot of energy and afterwards you know signing your first autographs and taking pictures with people was felt good yeah. mm -hmm. so what was that did you have that same kind of reaction when you went to mlw for the first time in philly oh yeah 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 so the same thing in philly um it was a quick turnaround mlw picked me up and then you know a few months later i'm in the battle riot and this is my first tv match a lot of people don't realize that like i've only worked with live crowds so i hadn't done a tv uh, match before and of course your first TV match, you're like, damn, I hope they're not quiet when I come out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know that I would be good. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. And because I always come out with a lot of energy. So if I come out with a lot of energy and they're quiet, it's going to be mad weird. So <laughs> that was the only thing I was really worried about. Not the 50,000 spots that had to memorize, but the crowd's reaction. <laughs> and so um, I, I, come, I came out and it was a pop. Like, it was like, roaring and i was like oh same thing i was like oh shit so that my uh, my uh reaction when they popped was like my real reaction and i was like my eyes got wide and i was like oh let's go you know because i had no idea what i was gonna do i had everything that i wanted to do but when you feel that energy it's your first you know live show after the pandemic too so they're riled up i'm wild up and the, the, the room the arena is electrifying so it was just a good chemistry yeah, definitely. I was watching it live and I was like, this is a perfect mix for like your first yeah. ever TV match. Yeah, yeah. But I know like a lot of wrestling fans at first, they're cheer really loud and sometimes on the internet, they can be a little crucial. So what was like the reaction to seeing like your first wrestling match compared to like what the internet wrestling fans might have been saying? Oh, it was the same thing there. Everybody was so right. kind. I thought it was, I thought I was being trolled. They were so nice. <laughs> I was like, the hell is going on? I'm used to seeing them talk trash. I'm just kidding. But yeah, they were, they were real good. Um, I got a lot of uh, opportunities to see who the fans were, talk to them after the show, and even on the internet, they were pretty good. Of course, of course. So, like, at Fightland, you're also part of, like, a big, uh, well, Fightland tapings, you're part of a big 12-man tag team match, which I guess would right. be your second ever TV match, which right. is crazy because that's a big stage to be on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, leading into that, like, so far you've had these two big matches, or now three, leading right. to this weekend, at all multi-man. So who do you want to face in your first one-on-one -on -one match in MLW? Oof, that's a great question. Um, I want to face whoever wants to stand in that ring with the judge, 10 toes down, because I'm bringing it, you know? Um, I don't want to call anybody out, anybody individually just right now, but just know the judge stays ready. 
that's, I mean, obviously, of course. So, like, leading into, like, War Game, or not War Games, War Chamber, after this event, the next big show, where do you think you'll be on the card then? Because, like, you went from being the Battle Riot to now in the main event. What's next for the big show? What, what do you have in mind for your goals in MLW? The goal is, I, I, need, I want that goal. The judge gives you main event energy. You know what I'm saying? So I think you already know what it's, what it's going to look like. You know, I'm coming. I want to look good in gold, you know? So I need a little gold around my my waist. So that's that's where my mind is, and that's where my energy is. You say gold, so are we talking like world heavyweight gold? Or are we talking like national openweight gold? Which one? I'm talking about gold. Whatever is available, oh. the opportunity presents itself, I'll be in there full speed. It could be the national weight, it could be the heavyweight, it doesn't matter. I mean, of course, I mean, that's pretty much my, <laughs> um, my last two things I want to talk about. I've been watching a lot of in, in, your uh, interviews and looking at the background a lot of times. You tend to have like a lot of shoes up yeah. in the background. So like, and I've also looked at your Instagram. You were rocking the forces training with Jay yeah. Cargill. What's like your favorite pair of shoes that you have in your collection right now? Oh, that's a great question. I have too many damn shoes. <laughs> oh, I don't have the shoes up right now because we're redesigning the whole house. We just did the living room. Now I'm in the office. But like you said, normally I have like shoes in the background and everything. Yeah. But I do have um, these joints right here. Oof, nice. <laughs> and then I have the Travis Scott's up here. Yeah, I was so about to mention those as well. <laughs> yeah, oh my, wow, nice. Expensive, <laughs> but nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't even wear those. They're too expensive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, 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 they're like seven hundred dollars shoes. I yeah. wouldn't step outside in that. Like, I try to make outside, sure that I get them for retail. I'm not a big resale guy because if I don't get it, that means I don't deserve it. That's oh, how man. I feel. <laughs> but yeah, right now I'm just I'm just rock, vibing with the ones, the Jordan ones, um, OG colorways. That's kind of my vibe right now. Yes, sir. That's good. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is faith, because that's something you talk about a lot on Twitter. Like you recently were tweeting about it, and that's just something you talk about a lot in this interview so far. So how important is faith to you and to like, your entire career? So uh, faith is huge. Um, like you said, I've only had uh, two televised matches, but I've had quite a few live matches. Yeah. But to be able to just be able to throw into the fire for these TV matches, you got to have a little bit of faith in yourself. You gotta have a little bit of faith in the people around you. And you gotta have faith that God has put you where you're supposed to be. And so that's why I was very seldom to say that I was nervous because the faith that is in me is what powered me to be able to do the kind of things that I'm doing right now. Cause I, you can't do everything on your own. You can't, you know, when you try to just force things and force things, you end up climbing, sometimes climbing the wrong mountain and then you're just toiling. So just being able to have that faith and knowing that you know, faith is believing in what is unseen and knowing that you have the ability in you is phenomenal. That's great. And to my last ever question for this interview, if you could sum up your entire wrestling career, your entire life in like one sentence, what would it be? Determined. Perfect. Just determined. Uh, where can I find you on social media if they're not already following you? Uh, my Instagram is at EJ underscore. My Twitter is at EJ the judge. Um, you can follow me. Uh, I put a link up. I got new merch out right now. It's the Anti-Judge Judge Club. You know what I'm saying? So you guys go out there, support. So my son Exodus can continue eating. <laughs> and and uh, I just appreciate y'all. Philly, we're going to be back next year. Uh, next week. I love the energy. Keep bringing it. I love y'all. Philly is basically my second home now. We going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, we going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, when did you like one, two, three? If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.